We have a big show for you coming up. Amanda Richter has more on an important movement at Skyview High School. Tara Cox rides along with the Prize Patrol, and Nick Bull shows us how two high schools are working together to make art. Let's go inside Vancouver Public Schools. Live it up, live it up, live it up. Welcome to the show, I'm Colleen Jamison. Today we have stories on technology, how kids are working together, and a whole lot more. We will definitely get into it in just a moment, but first, let's do our top three. These are our favorite posts from social media. Our number three comes from Ogden Principal April Whipple. She posts photos of the book of lanterns her students put together and that are on display in the school media center. Students were asked to paint pumpkins to match their favorite books. What a fun way to encourage reading. Number two comes from the district superintendent, Dr. Steve Webb. This photo comes from his visit to Sacagawea Elementary. Check out those happy student faces. Dr. Webb was learning more about the school's positive behavior program, which reduces bullying and other negative actions by rewarding kids for positive actions. And our number one comes from Northwest Corey. Take it on the field of Columbia River High School. The football team is enjoying the new turf this season, along with the girls' soccer team. The Chieftains have had a great season and qualified for the playoffs, which is a school tradition. This photo with the sun behind the grandstand really caught our eye. We begin with a topic that's hard for a lot of people to talk about, suicide. A new program at Skyview High School looks to end the stigma surrounding talking about it to show kids they have other options. Amanda Richter joins us now with more. Amanda? A special curriculum brought in by the staff was shown to every student at Skyview. It was developed in part by a Washington family who lost their son to suicide a few years ago. The message hits close to home for many Skyview students and staff. My mom left, uh, my dad, and they got divorced and like my grades went down and school was harder. I didn't have like as much friends and just kind of everything just didn't go so well. From there, it got worse for Skyview Junior Blake Taylor. And that put me in a really bad place and I attempted suicide multiple times. I landed myself in the hospital. He made it through, but not everyone who thinks about suicide does. That's why Skyview High School is presenting information to every student on what, for many, is a taboo subject. You know, even one uh, death by suicide is one too many, and we've had multiple here. Uh, we had four in the last three years, and so that's significantly uh, damaged and hurt us uh, to the core of our heart, and so we wanted to do something about that. For Counselor Jay Gowan, it's important to get people talking. We know that talking about this topic is actually helps to decrease the chance of suicides being completed, and that not talking about it doesn't prevent it, and the research has proven that. It's personal for Mr. Gowan. Uh, because I lost my best friend to a death by suicide back in 2005. Once you ask, it's clear that suicide has touched the lives of more people than you might realize. It's scary for me and for my friends. It's really hard for me to see them at this. I mean, being a senior in high school or a junior in high school, being traumatized by that, it's, it's incredible and I don't think it should have to happen. In the lesson, students learn how to spot if a classmate is struggling. Most of the signs I had witnessed or gone through and um, it was pretty accurate. Part of the solution is to reach out, to have difficult conversations. You don't want to be that one person to go and like say something necessarily all the time and like throw them under the bus and then be mad at you. But then at the same exact time it's a really big deal and if they're genuinely like feeling like oh I'm gonna attempt suicide it needs to be talked about. It's, it's not something that should be swept under the rug like it like it is or stigmatized. In this session, students are given the tools to help themselves or their classmates. We learned a long time ago that it wasn't a matter of the kids coming to the adults, is they're gonna go to each other. Blake called suicide hotlines. It was just nice to 
have someone be there to talk to you and listen and to understand. Creating a network of caring students and adults helps those who might be considering suicide to see another way. Focusing on the future was a big thing. Um, talking to other people helped me because um, a big problem with me was that I didn't want to actually die. I wanted to stop the pain. Now, Blake is thinking about life after high school and possibly a career in law enforcement. Um, I look forward to having a job and uh, just having fun with those that I love. Thanks to Blake, Jacob, Kelsey, and Mr. Gowan for sharing with us. If you believe someone you know might be considering suicide, use the SAG model. That's show you care, Ask directly, are you thinking about suicide? Get help right away. You can also call any of the numbers on the screen if you're considering suicide yourself. As you heard Blake say in the story, talking to someone can help. Mr. Gowan told us he hopes this curriculum can find its way into more classrooms across our area. He says it is having a big impact on the students who see it. Back to you, Colleen. It's time now for a ReSchools update, the latest on construction projects paid for with your bond dollars. Here's something really cool. We're seeing the first aerial video from the Ogden Elementary construction site. This footage was captured by Harper Half Peterson, Rick Ellis Incorporated, which graciously shared it with us. Ogden is getting a brand new building to replace its aging current one. The new building is being built in the field adjacent to the old building. When it's done next fall, Ogden students will move over and students from the King Elementary will take over the old Ogden building while their replacement school is being built. Of course, that's not the only construction project happening right now. Check out this photo from Vancouver iTech Preparatory. Robinson Construction and LSW Architects are working on this building, which is going up on the WSU Vancouver campus. Over at the McLaughlin Middle School and Marshall Elementary School building site, they're also making major strides. In this photo, they're laying concrete. Kids in the neighboring buildings are watching as their new schools are being built. This next photo is the bones of the future electrical room. There's a lot of work going on in these sites, which will be ready for the very next school year. And if you want more updates on construction projects, head to vansd.org slash reschools. We have plans for future sites, projects of existing sites, uh, progress rather, and a whole lot more. See what's going to be happening in your neighborhood school. It sounds simple, but one of the most important factors for student success is simply showing up to school. An initiative by the district is pushing kids to make attendance a priority. Tara Cox joins us now with more. Tara? Thanks. The data shows that student performance improves when they're in their seat, on time, every day. With that in mind, the district has programs in place to encourage families to make that their top priority. The most fun of those, without a doubt, is the Prize Patrol. The Prize Patrol is led by the district's attendance administrators and is joined by a variety of guests from the district office and elsewhere. Once a month, they tour schools, dropping in on classes with perfect attendance on that day. Every student gets a prize, and so does the teacher. It's a way to reward great attendance and encourage kids to be there every day. Oftentimes, schools recognize the students who have the best attendance or even improved attendance, but those kids who don't necessarily have the best attendance aren't um, recognized in any way. So when we show up, um, we are recognized every student, whether they have perfect attendance or not so perfect attendance. Uh, they have a win, um, and certain students need a win. The more a child is in class, the better they're going to perform. It may sound obvious, but it's a lesson that needs to be reinforced with students and parents. The learning that happens in the classroom can't be replicated when a student's not there. So a lot of times parents will say, oh, well, my student's very bright, they can catch up. And they may be very bright and be able to do work well themselves, but the classroom uh, misses out when the student's not there. The teacher might have to reteach content for kids who weren't there, so it slows down the classroom progress. Trish and her team hope that their Prize Patrol will encourage all school buildings to develop their own programs to encourage attendance. Several schools already have taken on that challenge. You may have seen sandwich boards up around the buildings listing the day's attendance figures. To learn more about the district's attendance efforts and why it's so important for kids to be at their desk every single day, head to the district's website, vanisd.org student-welfare-attendance. You can see the address there on your screen. 
There's lots of resources on there to help parents get their kids to class on time. Studies show it's especially important for kindergartners and first graders to be in class every day. Missing a lot of school early on can have a big impact on later grades. Back to you. Thank you so much, Tara. And the end of the school year is a long way from now, but seniors thinking about college need to act now. A series of special events throughout October helped get students closer to their goals. The district organized 14 events. This one was at Fort Vancouver High School with the theme of First You Have to FAFSA. The FAFSA is the federal application for financial aid for students. The events make it easy for students to get going on their journey to college even if they're not sure where they're headed. It could be college, trade schools, or specialty programs. It's very important that they're doing this right now. The FAFSA and the WASFA just opened on October 1st, um, and there are federal funds and state funds that, are, uh, that, that run out, essentially. So the earlier a student files their FAFSA, the more money they have access to to help them pay for college. At the events, staff members were on hand to guide students through the process of applying for aid. I do want to go to college, so this is like, like real deal, especially for seniors. Me, myself, like, I have no idea how to apply to college. I don't know any how to start, so it's like, this is just a great night to just get you to on track for it. The events took place across several nights at Hudson's Bay and Fort Vancouver High Schools, as well as at WSU Vancouver and the Fort Vancouver Regional Library. Even if you miss the events, the sooner you apply for aid, the more money you'll be able to get. So talk to your school's counselors for any help that you need. Time now for a We Learn update, a look at how students and teachers are using technology in the classroom. Most of us spend way too much time on our phones using apps. We're consumers, but two students at Skyview High School are more than that. They're producers. They've made their own app, which is now competing in a national competition. Nick Vol has more. Ojas V. Cambodge and Annika Epperly started with a shared value. Annika and I are really passionate about animal welfare. With that principle in mind, these students in the Skyview Science, Math, and Technology program began to develop an app. We thought if we can help influence kids uh, and teach them how to be better about taking care of animals, we can kind of translate that to when they grow up. Their app is designed to help children care for goldfish. Goldfish are usually the most common first pet, and a lot of kids think that, oh, it's just goldfish. We don't really have to take that much care of them, but there's still a lot that goes into um, creating a nurturing environment for them. The app has everything a kid needs to keep their fish happy. They can set alarms to remind them of feedings and to clean the fish tank. They can diagnose basic health problems. They can even color a picture of their fish. Their app is an entrant into the Congressional App Challenge, a national contest that encourages computer science. They're also looking at ways to get their app available to the public on the Google Play Store. Anika and Ojasvi built their project on software that doesn't teach a coding language, but rather the logic behind coding. This is our code for the home screen, and really all it does is when you click the button that says Symptom Selector, it takes you to the certain screen that corresponds with that. Programming kind of, for me, combines the technical, you know, math, problem solving aspects of what I like, and then the more creative, you have to come up with your own way to solve something. Using the example of making a sandwich, Ojasvi explains how precise you have to be when you're programming. You have to think like a computer, and you have to like be really specific about the um, sequence of events that should happen, because otherwise the computer will put like two pieces of bread and then jam and peanut butter on top of that, and obviously that's not what you want. Through planning and trial and error, they came up with a functional, helpful, and easy to use app. I just really like the logic of it, you know? Thank you so much, Nick, and the girls will learn the results of the contest later this fall. Annika, whom you just saw, is also waiting to see if she'll be a National Merit Scholarship finalist. She's a semi-finalist right now, and the National Merit Scholarship Program is one of the most prestigious academic awards a high schooler can earn. Annika is one of 16,000 semi-finalists from across the country. It may seem like a lot, but less than 1% of high school seniors qualify. As Annika knows, it's kind of a big deal. Um, it's pretty exciting. I was really happy when I figured that out. Uh... 
Annika plans to major in computer science in college next year. She'll find out if she's a finalist, which may come with a scholarship in the spring. When we see students doing amazing things with technology, it's easy to forget that there's a teacher behind them showing them how it's done. In a huge one-day event, a thousand teachers brushed up on their own tech skills. The district's instructional technology facilitators put together a giant professional development training day at Skyview. Initially, they expected a few hundred attendees, but that number ballooned to a thousand quickly. There was a broad spectrum of technical abilities. Teachers know they need to keep up with kids. It's a digital world that we live in, and especially kids that are, you know, in my case, 14 to 18 years old. They don't even, you know, bring a pencil to school with them necessarily because everything they do is digital and online. And yeah, it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about giving teachers the tools they need to effectively teach. Today is not about changing everything that they do by any means, but it's about finding little like glimpses of ways to do maybe something a little different or a way to look at a practice differently and to think about the kinds of things that they can have students engage in and the questions they can ask and how they can have students empowered in that process. Lessons included how to use hardware and software with an emphasis on collaboration. The event was an on uh, the event was an in-service day for teachers and gave them a full day of learning. As a bonus, there were food trucks and they were all on hand for lunch, which the teachers definitely appreciated. When students do research for school projects, they rely on the school library and online resources like Google for information. But how much of that is current and accurate? It can be tough to tell. A partnership now gives students access to a world of information they can trust on their iPads, phones, and laptops. Students in a Spanish class at Columbia River are preparing for a research project, and they now have a new tool. Thanks to a partnership between the Vancouver School District and the Fort Vancouver Regional Library, most high school and middle school students can access library material online for free. Every high school student is able to connect to databases, to SAT prep materials, to um, if they want to get access to learn about the driver's exam when they're working on their permit. So there's a whole range of resources available to them. In a world where Google makes information instantly available, why is this a better way? That might be where you go shopping. Um, or look for movie times or a place to take your date for the homecoming dance but it's not necessarily where you're looking at in terms of um, academic research and resources. That's because there's no gatekeeper, no one to say what's true and what's false. It was hard to know whether your source was credible because the author wasn't there or the actual editor. With resources vetted by the library, students can be sure their research is factual. You know, it's not just like looking up something on like Wikipedia or something, these are actual sources from real like historians and uh, college publications. It's also a reminder to students that their relationship with the library can be lifelong. While some students had physical library cards in the past, for many of them they maybe lost that connection after they were out of elementary school, but now they're starting to realize that the public library offers so much more than picture books. Yeah, it's really nice because it's like I wouldn't have ever known that this was actually existed unless I came here and was able to have this resource. The program can save students money too. For example, some academic searches cost as much as $40 per article. Thanks to the partnership, those articles are free for students. If you want to see more stories of technology in action in the classroom, check out the VPS YouTube page. It's youtube.com slash vansdtv. Just look for the We Learn playlist. Three VPS students travel to Washington, D.C. for a prestigious leadership academy. Fernanda Cerrillos of Hudson's Bay, along with Gabriela Rosales and Lindsay Luis of Fort Vancouver, made the trip. They attended the Washington Youth Leadership Seminar, which is put on by the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC. They all participate in a public service at school and are leaders at their schools. Congrats to the trio for representing Vancouver in our nation's capital. Few school traditions are as much fun as a school play, but two high schools are mixing it up a bit this fall. Their drama departments are working together on a joint production, and as Nick Vole shows us, the collaboration is pushing students to new heights. 
When it comes to sports, schools like Hudson's Bay and Skyview High School compete against each other. But in the arts, they have the freedom to work together. And that's exactly what's happening in a new drama production. It was a political statement. Okay, okay, you made your statement. I got my shoe. Also lit at school, right? In this scene, three chimpanzees, played by Hudson's Bay drama students, are tasked with writing Shakespeare. It's absurd, but that's the point. It's one of six acts in the comedy All in the Timing by David Ives. I think that the actual plays themselves are great and they're hilarious. Bay is handling three of the acts, Skyview the other three. When we first heard that it was going to be a Skyview mixed with Bay play, we were a little concerned on like how it was going to work, but it actually works quite well. It's definitely a new experience. We've never done this before, as far as I know. And it's really interesting getting to know kids from another school that we don't usually get to interact with. Skyview students are excited for the opportunity as well. It is pretty neat because well, you get to meet the students you've never met before. And I personally have never been in their um, stage, the black box. So it's just it's very interesting to have that experience. It's not just a chance to make new friends. The actors say it really raises the level of their performance. Um, I think it holds us to a certain standard because uh, we want to try to be just like them and I'm sure they kind of want to be like us so I think it's a, it's a different experience and it's, it's fun getting to know them and stuff. Collaborating with another school and performing a non-traditional play is exciting for students and their teachers. The one thing that all the kids have really been jonesing for is to do something that's you know, weird and out there. Um, they want to do edgier plays. They want to do more interesting, you know, crazy difficult plays, things that are challenging. Because we've got a lot of really great student actors, um, but there's only so many times you can do our town. It's definitely challenging. In this act, a character is trying to learn a made up language, which means the actors have to memorize lines that aren't exactly the King's English. Moklatu, badami. Nikto, ventrica, 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 please. Learning lines is probably hard enough in memorizing, but to do it in a weirdo fake language, how hard was that? Well, I mean, I have done Shakespeare before, so about the same thing. No, I. In the end, you understand everything the characters are trying to say, if you can hear them over the sound of laughter. It is absolutely insane and hilarious. And. I think everyone who comes is going to love it. So normally at the end of our stories, I'll say, inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Nick Vole. I'd like to hear how I should say it in your, the language you're speaking in this play. In Sally Vancouver Public uh, Academy. Mi klink nick rodent. What they said. Thanks, Nick. The show premieres on November 8th at Hudson's Bay and runs through the 10th. It will be in the Black Box Theater and tickets are $5. The show on the 10th is a matinee and if you're a student, it's just $4. That's not the only exciting theater production coming up. Vancouver School of Arts and Academics has a new show called Vital Forces, This Is Not My Home. It's an original piece produced with a guest artist, Arturo Martinini, who comes from Italy. That show is in the clown theater tradition and involves a lot of physical comedy. It lasts two weekends. See it November 8th through the 10th or the 15th and 16th. The show will be at VSAA in its Black Box Theater. General admission is just five bucks. Here's another cool event on November 8th. This one is to celebrate Veterans Day. At the Skyview Auditorium at 7 p.m., you'll hear the award-winning Skyview Band play a medley and at the end, they'll play the theme song for each branch of the military. It's just three bucks a plate to eat apple pie while you enjoy the tunes. And if you're a veteran, you eat for free. There will be a special moment to honor your service. Time now for the big picture, our favorite image on social media. This one comes from third grade teacher Nadia Lutz at Ogden Elementary, and it really captures the excitement among students and staff about the new buildings under construction across our area. Look at those kids eagerly watching construction workers put together the new Ogden Elementary. Students will be moving in next fall and it's a great photo this lets. Let's take a look at what's happening across Vancouver Public Schools. Believe it or not, Thanksgiving break is not too far away. For VPS students and staff, the break begins on Wednesday the 21st, the day before the holiday, and that makes it a five-day weekend, so plan accordingly. And that is it for us. For Amanda Richter, Tara Cox, and Nick Vole, thank you so much for watching Inside Vancouver Public Schools. I'm Colleen Jamison.